This is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm so glad that God has given me another opportunity to come and share. Um, the, the, the last couple of weeks, the song that has been in my spirit is that I will serve you because I love you. I will do it just because I love you. It is not because I'm forced. It is not because I'm paid. But I serve God because I love him. Hallelujah. Today I have a message that I think it will be a blessing to you because it is already a blessing to me. I have preached to myself this last couple of weeks. I have spoken to it into my spirit and I told myself that I want to be a practical Christian. I want to walk with some characteristics that can help me as I, as I seek to please God. That I will not take anything that doesn't belong to me. I will not. It, will, it doesn't add anything that I chuckle. It comes to Point to punch holes into that which God has given me. I will not retreat back. I will wait upon God and his appointment. It might take longer. Actually, sometimes it takes too long and you wonder, God, are you going to come? But God will still come. What he has promised, he will still, he will still come. We had a wonderful service this morning and the word that was spoken was very, very practical. That God is still in the business of restoring. And it doesn't matter. You know, some of you, you are still living in your, the other years that we talked about. We, we can tell God to do anything. You told him, but he hasn't come. Don't give, you, give up. He can show up even before this uh, or corona or through the corona uh, period. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want us to read 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 to 11. And there we are going to see what Peter is trying to tell the saints, the, those who are scattered in the five provinces of Asia Minor. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Just keep on holding it there. Return it back there. Be of sound judgment and sober spirit. For the purpose of what? For the purpose of prayer. Next. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers what? All right. Be hospitable to one another without complaint when you help someone. Don't mama and gobble. Verse number 10. As each one has received a special a gift, Employing it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks, it is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves, it is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies. So that all, in all things, God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. To whom belongs the glory, dominion forever. And ever and the church say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. About a couple of things, you know, uh, this couple of Sundays we have discovered you don't say all the points because if you say all the points, then you don't finish. Uh, we are trying to learn. You know, some of us are from the Tukutendesa group. We like Kwenda na Mwanga. Mwanga macho. But I'll try my best uh, um, and, and, and share. Peter is speaking to people that are homeless and suffering. People that are wandering. They are like refugees. You see, when, when you see some of these mo movies of refugees running from their countries, you see someone carrying children, goats and everything. They are carrying, uh, uh, they, they are carrying beddings. And you can see they left so many others. They are just carrying what can be carried and what can, they can have. And trying to encourage them and trying to strengthen them was not an easy task. You know, because these people are hungry, these people don't know where to sleep, they don't know what is going to happen tomorrow, and there Peter wants to encourage them. And you see some of us have a tendency of saying, no, we are not suffering, we are not refugees, we are not carrying our bags. But I told you from when we started, live like a stranger, carry light, because any time we can leave this planet Earth. You know, this week I have lost a dear friend, a good friend, a humorous friend, a guy that had so many jokes. And we met this week, and we talked about the things that we were talking. But Wednesday, 
He went home. And you, 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 so when you're told you can't believe, you, 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 you want to get mad about everything. And then you have to be told by the daughter this. What happened on Saturday? He was okay. Then he came back to work and so on and so forth. And today he's not there. Now imagine leaving everything behind because he was not a poor man. Leaving everything behind. And yet we struggle with it. We struggle with these things that, um, uh, and so on and so forth. So Peter is trying to encourage these people that don't you worry. Even the way you are, you are still blessed. Even as you journey from one place to, to another as a refugee, you are still blessed. Even when you are scattered, you are still blessed. And I want to speak to someone listening to us here or at home that you are blessed. And I tell you, if God has blessed you, nobody can unbless you. It's already declared and settled. I am blessed. You are blessed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So whatever is happening right now, even the situation that you could be in, if the Lord has declared you are blessed, then you are blessed. So the apostle is trying to say something to these people. And in these few verses, he speaks very profound uh, things. Things that characterize our life that flow from the text, you see? And um, I almost got into that temptation to tell you which they are. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But we'll start the sequence and reach where we are to reach. The first thing that Peter talks about here, which should help all of us as believers with the corona or no corona, with the hardship, no, no job, no nothing, is, is, is this. The end of all things is at hand, which means... It is good always to have a continued watch for the Lord's return. And that is in verse 7. The Lord return, continue watch for the Lord's return. You see, as you go to sleep, you tell God, thank you, you did not come today. But even tonight, I'm waiting for you. You, 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 you live with a continued watch, watching and waiting, looking where? Looking above. Filled with his goodness. Lost in his love. That's what Peter is trying to tell these guys. doesn't matter where you are. Just gaze up in the sky. See the Lord can come anytime. Because that's what the word of God tells us. He says the end of all things is at hand. And we could translate it and say it is near. It's near. Of course, if you are a, a skeptic, some of the things that you struggle with is this. Na huyu Yesu ambaye Petro wakati wa Pentecote alisema anarudi kwani hajafika Petro wakati wa Pentecote anasema hivi and this is that which was prophesied that in the last days si ndivyo Petro alisema wakati ule na sasa tena anarudia wakati wa mwisho umewadia the question is that you and I ask why has it taken too long is because you are mathematics and the mathematics of God are different. No wonder people has, have said, he is coming on this day and nothing has happened. But the truth is, he is coming and his coming is near. Because what Peter was saying, we have entered in a period of his coming. From the day of Pentecost, we have entered in the period of his coming. Hallelujah. First Peter 4, 7. Let's look at Luke 12. That is 6 to 37. Luke 12, that is 6 to 37. And you yourself be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, there may be open to him immediately. You be like those people. Hallelujah. Matthew 24 and verse number 3. Verse, Matthew 24 and verse number 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of age. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus is coming. Even the disciples wanted to know, When, 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 when are you coming? But the key word, if you want to live well in this world, relate it with the coming of the Lord by looking up anxiously waiting for the Lord. Jesus, when are you coming? You know, at a certain age, we don't want him to come. Somebody used to joke like this, especially when you are about to get married. You say, Lord, you can wait. 
First, I get married. Then when you get married, you start saying, Lord, just wait. Don't come. Let me have children. And then when you have children, Lord, don't come. I'm waiting for grandchildren. Then you have them. Then you say, Lord, don't come. I'm waiting for great. You see, we'll struggle a lot. The thing is, Lord Jesus, you can come. If it pleases you to come, come even today as we continue serving your people. Hallelujah. The Lord is still coming because we are in that period of his coming. So Peter is telling the saints, watch out, the Lord is still coming. Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. Be like men who are waiting for their master. When he returns from the wedding feast, be there, wait for him. So indeed, the end of things is at hand. Frankly, the end began when the Lord first came. When he came, the end started because he says the kingdom of God is now. He never said it is then. So it is started from that very point and we give God all the praise. Now to be sure, Peter lived with that sense of divine urgency. And he is calling on the saints to do the same, to live the same way because he knew the Lord Jesus Christ was coming and he will come very, very soon. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 51, the Bible says this, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump of the trumpet, the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will all be changed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Paul also speaks about it in 1 Thessalonians 4. The rapture of the church, we read in verse number 15. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not precede those who have fallen fast. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's be waiting for the coming of Jesus because he is coming. And because of that, you can live a good practical life. A Christian who is living well talks about where he is going, talks about their home, talks about, you know, unajua kila mtu anakwao, lakini kwetu huku kwa dunia hii, kwingine hatutakai kuogea kwa sababu ni mahiga iguru. But, kule tunaenda ni dhahabu. You know, somebody, somebody, somebody was telling me, hey, we bishop, sasa watu nasikia, kama unaendesha muso hapa, utaendesha muso bingu, na mambia muso bingu ni, ata Kenya power, hana kazi. You know, hana. Oh, ni washo tu anajua hakuta kuwa Kenya power huko. The point that I'm saying is that binguni atuendeshi gari, kama uendeshi hapa wachana. Hatuta kuwa tukichimba dhahabu, tutatembea juu yake. Sasa kama upati hapa wachana. Na inakupa moyo. Nasema bwana, hallelujah, sijaona dhahabu, nitaikanyanga. Sijaona dhahabu, nitatereza juu yake. You know, you get excited about it. And you can even tell people, wacha kuniringia siku moja. Mimi ni mwana wa mfalme, ndio utakuta nimeingia kwa ufamo wa baba. So that is critical for us. If you want to live a good, practical Christian life, one of the things that needs to be in your spirit is the urgency of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It will help you to be pure. Utu tu dhabi tudogo tuko tu wakuaguka ukiamuka. Uki, ukiweka agency ya kuja kwa kristo. Tu dhabi uto utatuhepa. Lakini ukifikiria utakaa sana kwa sabu umekaa kama petro. Utajiumiza mwenyewe. Number two, ama ya pili. Ambayo ni nzuri kwa mkristo. A mature Christian will not only be driven by continue watch for the Lord's return. But consuming passion for holiness. Notice he says the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Let me tell you, friends, if you have an agency of the coming of the Lord, utaomba. Utaomba. Na utaomba maombi ambao tulikuwa tukiomba shule, blessed, bless it. Na wanasema amen, wanafunzi na kuanza kukura ugali. Na kabla, 
kabla hata tukae chini wale tulikuwa tukiomba ya kikweli wameanza kutoka kwa sababu ugali walikuwa wakikunja tu wakati tulikuwa tunasema blessed bless it kwa hivyo ni kumaliza na kitoyo na kuweka juu na wengine ni, watu, ni watundu na sahani zilikuwa za plastic bas mnaelewa na ni vijana but the point that we are bringing is together with that we must have a consuming passion from us of holiness of god which is very very critical for us sound judgment sound judgment means to be sound in mind it literally has the idea of being in your right mind the idea of having a proper perspective of yourself is to see yourself as you really are not how you think but how you are blessed be the name of the lord knowing how you are be sober you know i know some some of us say no bishop me i pray when i have a need then you have missed it you don't pray when you have a need you pray pray without ceasing you pray and when you have prayed pray some more you don't pray for things only you pray for cover you pray for protection you pray for provision you pray for grace you pray not when you have a need now that is a problem because when you have a need let me tell you what happens hata machozi inatoka kwa sababu umefinywa lakini kama ungekuwa ukiomba it's like you are putting missiles for to to help you attack the enemy when he comes many times we know we live in times that are very difficult even now we need to keep on praying and praying and when we have prayed we pray some more so Christian who is sober in spirit will be one who has his priorities right. He will have a proper perspective of himself and the world around him. He's not going to be seduced by the things of the world. He's going to live separate from the world that's what Peter is saying. He is going to live in light of eternity. That is critical. If I could make it real practical. It is the life of a Christian who frankly knows who he has believed knows where he is going and knowing where he is you are always sober i i i normally tell myself one of the biggest mistake that i will ever do is to forget where god has taken me the minute i forget that i'm lost the minute i forget where god is taking me i'm lost I need to keep that in focus. Karate ga kulinu, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I need to keep in focus. A place in Zimmerman that I stayed that even the 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 the, the meza, the dining table we could not use it. Oh, hallelujah. You know, it, it's that thought where you know, if you have visitors, some of them will sleep in the kitchen. That is the thing that needs to be in your mind. That is it. Knowing that you had not rose us more than two. Now that is it. So that even when you have them and you are wondering nitavagani, you stop a little and you say, "Pride come to my feet." You know. Matatu tumeendesha, matatu tumebeba watu nazo. But you can be worked up. You can pride can come up and Peter is trying to tell the saints, "Don't forget this. Let the passion for holiness consume you. First Peter 4 verse 9. Quickly. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Grumbling. First Peter 1:13. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to his coming. Hallelujah. Leviticus. Leviticus. 11:44 and 45 I am the Lord your God consecrate yourself and be holy because I'm holy do not make yourself un- unclean by any creature that moves along the ground I am the Lord who brought you up out of, e- of Egypt to be your God therefore be holy because I am holy let that passion eat you up Hallelujah let that passion eat you, eat, eat you up Hallelujah I am the Lord I am the Lord. If I can digress for a moment, remember holiness is the all encompassing attribute of God. Believers must grasp this. Holiness is the complete otherness of God. 
the transcendent glory of God. And this is why it is so important. We need to have it. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord, I am holy. Hallelujah. The other point, which is number three. So it is, Peter is telling the suffering saint, folks, we have to have a continued watch for the Lord's return. We have a consuming passion for holiness, but he tells them another thing. Another thing. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude of sin. Commitment. Commitment for fellow believers. Loving fellow believers. One of the things that I have, I have thought is very interesting in the battles of faith is when you are battling with other believers. So when you are battling with other believers, in kali sana, because as they pray for you, you are the devil. So they rebuke you. And as you pray against them, what do you do? You rebuke them. They are the devil. And shetani ni muongo, because... If there is anything that God would like to do for the saints of God, wherever, is unity. Because with unity, you can do a lot. So when Christians are fighting with each other and they are not united, the devil takes advantage and things can be planted, which later on, many years later, instead of that group becoming united or that family becoming united or that community becoming united, what happens is that you fear one another. Antagonism happens. And it can destroy any church, any group, any fellowship. Love covers a multitude of sin. And we don't have time to talk about how love can cover a multitude of sin because it does not simply mean you can sin, but because I love you, I'll cover you. That's not the point. But it, it would simply mean I know you have erred, but you are still my brother and I will lead you to your security and cover and protection and healing. I will lead you to a place where you can repent. So I will not condemn you I will cover you until you are recovered. I will protect you until you... You remember the story of this man who met this man that was beaten. He took him into an inn and he said, take care of him. I am going on a little journey. But when I come, I will clear the bill. Now that is all what love does. Love does not condemn. If you read 1 Corinthians 13, it will tell you what love is all about. And here Peter is saying, for us, those scattered as we are, Let's keep love together. Let's, be, let's love one another. Let's be committed with one another. Those that have nothing, let's give them. You remember it is Peter in his church where for the first time people sold everything they had and gave to the poor. Peter was the priest. He was the bishop. Now you can see him repeating again. Because he knows no way. Nobody should go hungry when we have it. Let's love our brothers. Let's, and you know what? This sermon is good. It, it is fitting now. And I want to, to say here, God, God is good. Hatuja kosa chakura. Watu wanakuja wanabeba. Kinaonekana kama kinaisha. Hey, na mujiza nao mwingine, unatendeka. Ha, hakikosi. Kwa sababu gani? Kwa sababu we unatoa unga. Wewe. Endelea kutoa unga. We, and kuna wengine wame, wame dandia, si wa hii church. Nakira na kamuji tu. Kwa sababu wanajua, wakisha ingia kwa compound, wezi mtu wakivira. Bas, anatoka na unga yake. So, mahali ya kufungia ye ni inje, na uweze fungia mtu wa mungu inje. Unafadhali ufungia ye ndani, anaweza pata uzima wa mirele. Na kuna wengine wa meokoka. So, I'm saying that is good. That's what Christian and brotherly love is. And I tell you, friends, and hear me, and I have said it on this pulpit. Usiangalie suti yangu. Bwana, ukijua ni nanja. Bwana, nileteka unga. Na we wacha maringo. Kama huna huna. Ukiretewa pika ugari watu wako wakule. Ah. Atinani alikuambia. I don't need to be told by anybody. I can look at you and say, hey. Whoa. Uyu. Uyu wacha ni mpige jeki. Piga ye jeki. Na we ukipigwa jeki pokea. Hata kama ni mia mamia mbili. Najua wengine tunamaringo sana. Kuna nipa kwa nini? Kuna mpango gani? Hakuna. Brotherly love. 
Amen. Sasa tukisema tutaendelea. Hatutamaliza. Hebu nimalize point hizo zingine kwa kukupa maandiko. Na tumesoma hiyo. Be hospitable. Verse 8 and 9. Na mwisho contagious seal or zeal for God's glory. Verse 10 and 11. Peter is telling them, Hakuna mutu kwa dunia hi hana karama. Amen. Every one of us, we have a gift. Your gift is not like mine, but everyone has a gift. So he says, if your gift is to speak, if your gift is to serve, whatever your gift is, do it for the glory of God. Be zealous. Hallelujah. Be zealous. Wewe, tumia karama yako. Wewe, tumia kile mungu wa mekupa. Na hakuna mtu hapa hana karama. Amen. Kuna mtu alisema, smiley zetu ziko ndani ya mask. Kwa hivyo hata amen zetu ziko pale. What I'm saying, you have a gift. You know, my prayer for you today is that God will cause you to discover the gifts that you have so that you can use them so that we can glorify God. Some of us are very good. They, they, they can use their writing scales. Even where there is fire, they can put off the fire by their scales. Use the gifts that you have. Some of us have wonderful voices. Use them. Some of us have reconciliation spirit. Use it. Use the gifts that you have, whether it is to serve, serve with love, whether it is to minister, minister with grace. Use your gifts. If you want to live well as you wait for the coming of the Lord, one of the things that you need to do is to use your gift. Can you imagine if, if, if you go this week or next week, you are not there, you have gone. Utatuachia nini? Siju umeenda mazishi, Ukasikia hakuna story kwa sababu jamaa hakuacha kitu. Tumeenda zingine unashindwa. Hey, si jamaa alimaliza kazi yake. Ama ujaenda kwa mazishi ukaona jamaa alimaliza kazi yake. Kwa sababu sio miaka kazi yake alimali. Wengine maliza kazi yako bwana. Sasa uta hiyo ndoto tutaiweka kwa kaburi. Hiyo waandishi wa kitabu tutaweka kwa kaburi. Hiyo kusavu wengine tutaweka hapana bwana. Kipindi hiki Hebu utumie karama ulizo nazo. Na utumie kwa nguvu. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you for your people. And like Peter, we have come to encourage one another in this season of Corona. To say, there is a God we have trusted in. To say, there is deliverance along the way. To say, where we stand is not permanent. To say, there is a place we are going. Watching and looking. Watching and waiting, watching and rejoicing that you are coming back for the church because we are living in the last days of the last days. I want to pray for your people, Heavenly Father, that they will stir up the gifts that they have. Some have two, some have three, some have four, others have one. But your Father, it is that one, how we are going to use it, that will give glory and honor to your holy name. I want to speak, Heavenly Father, if there is any clouded by the world that we can, we are not watching in prayer, we are not sober where we are. Father, help us to be sober so that every day at the end of the day we thank God that we are victorious. And if we have failed, we repent because we want when the Lord will come, when the archangel, the trumpet will sound and the Lord will descend, we will go up to meet him in the air. Because that is better than anything that we can have here on this earth, whether land or vehicles or property. The best thing that we can have is to have Christ in our heart. And of course the Bible tells us Christ in our heart. He becomes the hope of our glory. Our Heavenly Father, I also want to thank you for that listener that has been listening. Maybe he could be even in this church this morning. If you are here or wherever you are watching and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you have not been watching, you have not been waiting. I want to invite you so that you can join the people that are waiting, the people that are watching, 
the people that are looking above. So that your heart when Christ comes will be ready for his coming. Would you like to pray this prayer after me? Pray this after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you. I have noted that I have not been waiting and I have not been watching because my life has not been properly in you. And today I receive you as Lord and Savior in my heart. And from today, I'll keep waiting, I'll keep watching, and I'll keep looking above. And I thank you that I'm saved from today. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. Now that you have prayed that prayer, remember we have, we have these numbers up here. Please, you can call the pastors and they'll be ready to pray with you. Hallelujah.